geek post on any message board anywhere. You understand why we call this opinion piece. But let's face it, manga is an odd phenomenon. It sort of exploded in America for a bunch of unusual reasons. The real place to read manga is on the subway in Japan. Ride the Hanzamon line to Shibuya and catch up on your favorite stories in Shonen Jump or Champion Red. That's what it was made for, but not anymore. Manga is different from U.S. comic books in a couple of ways. One, manga is very easy to consume. The pages aren't as dense with text and story the way that, say, an Alan Moore comic is. It's really easy to breeze through a bunch of chapters and never feel lost. And two, there's just so many damn titles that it's impossible to keep up with them all. Manga is the ultimate long tail market. This results in an unusual situation. The easy to read aspect makes it a perfect fit to read online and the ridiculous number of titles makes it possible to find manga titles that you absolutely love, no matter how bizarre your taste is. In fact, the more offbeat your taste is, the better. Manga being scanslated into English is a thing, and that's exactly what it sounds like. Who needs to wait for a publisher to officially translate something when an otaku will do it for a donation button that you'll never touch? So you've got all of these Americans geeking out over scanslated manga, reading crazy weird stuff that's all over the place, and a lot of eyebrows are being raised because of it. But let's face it, manga is cool, and it's cool because it allows geeks to be snobs again. You don't think manga geeks are snobby? Trying saying Naruto in front of one instead of Naruto. Let me know how that goes. Or just try saying manga. Young people are flocking to manga that you know nothing about. And they are dying to taunt you about it. It's the new alternative music. Manga has become like a college radio station where the programming director is the guy who is Jack Black's more esoteric sidekick in High Fidelity. Oh, you wouldn't have heard the manga I read. You can only get it on indie torrent sites. It's quite possible your parents know more about the Avengers than you do. And that's no fun. But manga is like the rise of foreign movies in the 1960s. It's something your parents don't get and young people do. Marvel and DC are completely mainstream. Even when you look at Western comic books outside the big two, you can still buy a talking plush toy of the lying cat from Saga. Manga isn't just about superheroes. It actually has the diversity of genres that Westerners cry for in American comic books. Lucifer and Biscuit Hammer might be too strange for you, but it's not cookie cutter content. Because there's a need for so many pages, the stories are often non-formulaic. They take strange twists. There's a lot of weird manga out there. Really weird. But you know what? Weird is good. Manga is weird in a whole bunch of different ways. And finding the weirdness that fits in with yours is a good thing. The people I know who are really into manga are so cool. I think part of it is that in America, you have to do some tracking down in order to find the manga that you like. And there's so much of it that when people are really into certain mangas, it's an informed and educated decision. And people who consume media in such a thoughtful way tend to be cool. Manga is obviously, intimately, tied to anime. When you type in, why do people like, on Google, the top answer after that is anime. I submit this confusion as Exhibit A, that Japanese pop culture is cool. And to me, manga is even cooler than anime, since I'm always more impressed by people who read something than watch something. Anytime anyone starts to tell you the difference between a specific manga and the anime that was adapted from it, I cut them off and say, please stop. You do not need to say another word to prove to me that you are on the cutting edge of taste. I had more than one friend recommend to me that I read Pluto, which is a high concept retelling of the famous Astro Boy story, The Greatest Robot on Earth. I was blown away. It was over 1,700 pages, and the title character didn't even make a full-on appearance until about page 1,300. I've simply never seen 
a storytelling canvas like that in any other medium. And that's the sort of stuff you get from manga all the time. I still want to check out Canon God Exaxion, Shin Mazenger Zero, and Monster. And I will. It will be easy. Manga and anime aren't just causing people to track them down and consume them. They're causing people to create, or at least want to be creators. You go to the mall and you see some art studio with kids' classes on how to draw manga and anime. At the mall! Manga Studio is a huge piece of software. Creators with Patreon accounts showing manga tutorials, they just rake it in. To me, that's the true test of manga's worth. Because let's face it, exploring content is at its best when it causes you to explore yourself. <laughs>